Hi all, me again. Sorry you can't see me, I'm behind the camera. Just a quick video on a couple, I'm doing a quick video on to help people who sent in a question about how to cheat your native sync speed of your flash. Or the question was, can you cheat the native sync speed of your flash? So, I've just set up a little rig here. As you can see, there's two bits of white matte board and a reflector on the left just to fill in. I don't know why I put that there, it's just they were getting a bit of a shadow, so I thought I'd just line it off, being the professional I am, even though I really didn't need to for this tutorial. But So, what I've done is, I've got my YN560. Now, I could use my Canon, it doesn't matter. I'm using the cheap triggers to trigger it off. Uh, it's in manual. What I This is what you need to do, by the way, people that I don't know about the rig you're going to set up but you need to do a similar thing to what I'm going to do here so you know that what shutter speed you can use and how far your sensor is actually getting the flash and how much isn't that's the idea of this little part here if you already know that you could probably google it to be honest it's up to you you can probably google it for your model and it'll tell you there you won't even have to do this but I thought that some people had actually given something to do and they'd enjoy doing the test themselves so what we have here is, we have the flash on the right hand side, I've put my little homemade beauty dish on it just for a nice softer light and so I don't get to use it much and I really really love it. Um, I've set my camera at 1 250th of a second because that's what the native sync speed is in my 50D. I've set my aperture at 5.6 and my ISO at 200. Now that's what you can set your camera up to or 1 200th of a second it depends whether you're using T3i or not or T2i they're a slightly slow sync speed find out your sync speed of your camera set it to that sync speed to start off with set your aperture somewhere it doesn't matter where I just chose 5 6 as an aperture of convenience because to be honest I'm using my 70 to 300 lens because I'm going to stand behind the video camera and take the shot um, and I didn't want to change him from f4 to f5.6 if I was zooming in and out so I've just locked it in at 5.6 in manual shutter speed 250th, ISO 200 just to make me flash so I could turn it down a bit didn't have to have as much power coming out of the flash so what you want to do is once you've done that you need to take a shot and if it's not right go manually go turn your power up and down on your flash until you get an exposure at your sync speed on your flash that you like which I'm going to do now I've actually already done it though, but I'm going to do it again while I'm on the thingy. And my flash didn't go off. Well, I'll try it again. Okay, great. Probably a shade too bright, but I'm not going to touch it. Right, so what I've just done there is I've took a shot at my native sync speed, 250th of a second. So I'm not going to touch the power on the flash everything's going to be left now now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the same shot again or oh, very similar I've moved a bit 250th 320th 400 500 yeah we'll leave, we'll leave these as the shots I'm actually going to delete the others no nope. I'm going to do them flat so basically that's just my camera in your old regular position which is, I know it's out of focus, but that position, I did them in that way at first. Okay, so just a shot of the back of the camera to say me putting pictures on the PC. As you can see, this was taken at 250th of a second, at f5.6, and then don't show your ISO on that, but it is there. So, I then took the same shot again, and as you can see, if you look at the bottom, in fact, that that's not even, yeah, it's about... As you can see, you can see the black line coming up and the shutter speed on that is on the top left, which was 320th. So then we went to 400, which is nearly half, then 500, which is three quarters. So with that in mind, now we know this, if you wanted to photograph that flower at 1 400 of a second and get the full frame in, so that, so that you had the same illumination as this all you do is you'd move your frame in so that this was this started in the top three quarters of your viewfinder which would then enable you to I mean I could have just to be honest you could probably get away with that and just crop that and it'd be fine but if I'd have just zoomed out a bit and moved the flower up to the top of the frame a little bit more then 
yeah, the black line still would have been there, but I still would have had flash illuminating what I'm interested in. So I do this test like I've done. I don't think I'd really ever use 1.500 because it's really killing frame like. I suppose if you had something on the... I, I don't know, if you had something that you'd only cared about in top quarter in the flash, then yeah, you could you could use that that shutter speed. It's up to you, but you can definitely use one t uh, 400 and 320, or I think on a 60D it'd be 200, 250 and 320. I think that one there where I've got 500, uh, 400 there, then on your... 600D or 550D, I think because they're a slightly short, slow sync speed, you might only get away with 320th, so you get, you'll get you get 250th and 320th and get that result there on your 320th instead of 400 like me, but it still enables you to go above your sync speed. So here we are again, <clears throat> this book is by David Zeiser, it's called Captured by the Light, I don't know if I've said it before, I probably have, if you haven't got it, buy it. It's brilliant. End of. I'm not going to say no else. Just buy it. Stop being tight. Go out. Spend your money and buy it. Even if you're not a wedding photographer. I know it's about wedding photography but it, it's irrelevant. It'll still come into... I suppose if you're a landscape photographer you might dodge, give it a dodge but if you do pictures of kids, pictures of people, parties, portraits, whatever, it's going to help you with all those scenarios. It really, really is a good book. Anyway, this is this is one of the pages out of his book which actually talks about sync speed, which I probably could have showed you instead of showing you the other bit I did. But I just wanted to show people that so they know how to do their own experiment to find out what your sync what your sync speed can do. Now, David Zeiser has got a 40D and a 50D. Now, this is his when he when he puts his shutter speed up to 320th of a second. This is what doesn't catch the flash. So let let me just elaborate on what this page is actually saying. David took this shot and decided that he was he was he had he always uses off camera flash anybody who knows mr zizer he'll have decided that he wanted a faster shutter speed than 250th of a second he might wanted to darken the sky out of camera instead of post production later on or maybe something was blinking and he wanted just to speed his shutter up for that reason anyway say his shutter at 320th of a second but because David knows, because he did the test when I did, he knew that the bottom quarter of his frame wasn't going to catch the flash. But bearing in mind he was using a lot of ambient as well, he wasn't just using flash like I was a minute ago. I was doing a flash exposure. This is a mix. So what he's done is, he actually hasn't recomposed his camera. He just hasn't bothered that the bottom bit has, has not got the flash. I don't know how clear that's going to be on video, but... But basically that little bit there is there and you can see it's got flash from the from there upwards and David just ain't bothered about that he, he just he's quite happy to do that but what David could have done if he wanted to would tilt his camera down a bit and make it so that the this bottom bit here was just useless space like it's the grass and the flash would have actually hit the full bride but as David knows that I know he, he hasn't messed up he's just done it like that he's obviously likes it like that so he doesn't really care but but i'm saying for people who think well i would want the flash to hit the bottom of the dress and all mate well that's no worries zoom out a bit basically you've got to take the frame you can you won't always be able to get the frame in your after if you're going to do that because you'll have to remember that the bottom part of your frame is not going to get the flash so make that useless space in your picture so you can just crop it out later on and here's another example we keep knocking camera <laughs> Sorry, and here's another example, but the ambient must have been a lot higher here, more, 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 because if you look, it's not quite as dark as that one. But again, you can see the bottom half, I think he took that one at 400, and the bottom half has not hit the flash. But it, it, I mean, you can't see it on the camera, but this, this grass is still green. Um, it's still taking in ambient light. But again, if David had wanted to, he could have zoomed out a little bit so the frame was wider, moved his camera down so that more of the grass was the bit that didn't get the flash and the dress did. So there's another little tip for you. Um, that's good. I'll just turn the page just to show you this and then I think we're about done. Oops. Here's another example. Now this is another one he took and if you look the bottom half of the picture didn't get flash. So what David did was, knowing that the top half of the picture was the sky and stuff like that, basically what he did is he turned his camera upside down. 
So that meant that, that, that if you look now, that the top part of the picture which got flash and the bit where the sky is didn't, but to be honest, think about it logically, the flash wouldn't do out to that anyway. And really, really clever that is. I wouldn't have thought of that to be honest and, and it's something I'm going to remember now. So when he's tipped it over like that, he's then got this here which is full illumination and this top part of the frame didn't get the flash but to be fair it wouldn't have really done very much to it anyway so I hope that helps and if you have any other questions I don't like that please leave me some comments and I may do you a video it's up to you thank you very much